How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over vapor pressure lowering problems and specifically how increasing a solution's concentration can lower the vapor pressure of that solution. And we're going to use Routes Law as a colligative property. So first off, what is Routes Law? Um, Routes Law is the partial pressure of each component of an ideal mixture of liquids is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure component multiplied by its mole fraction in the mixture. So that's pretty wordy, but essentially what that means is it, it gives you a framework of how you can figure out what the partial pressure of any individual component of a mixture is uh, or a solution uh, by multiplying it by its mole fraction. So we'll just put that to the side and um, jump into the first problem here. All right. So a solution contains 46.5 grams of NaCl and 446 grams of water. Calculate the vapor pressure of the solution at 32 degrees Celsius, and given the vapor pressure of water at 32 degrees Celsius is 35.7 millimeters of mercury. So the first thing we need to do here is uh, eventually, okay. What I like to do is uh, figure out what our end goal is, like our finish line here. What are we trying to get to? We're gonna eventually use this formula here, P1 equals X1, P1 degrees. And uh, that's right from there. Uh, like As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different formulas you can use, and I tried to write out what each of the variables mean there. But um, but yeah, basically we're eventually gonna use this. So what, what are we gonna do? We're gonna start by getting moles of solute per solvent um, of each of these. So we're gonna start with the moles of NaCl. That's gonna be 46.5 grams of NaCl times one mole NaCl per 58.44 grams of NaCl. Just using the molar mass there. And uh, I'll just bunch my calculations together here. Um, moles of H2O, it's gonna equal 446 grams and multiply that by the molar mass of water, one mole of H2O, 18.02 grams H2O equals, and now we can grab our calculator. Okay, so here we're gonna get 0 0.7957 moles of NaCl. And then down here, get 24.7503 moles of water. Okay, cool. So now we can plug that all in, move that down to this formula here. X of H2O is gonna equal the N of H2O over N of H2O plus N of NaCl. So basically what we're doing here is we're getting the mole fraction uh, for water. So the moles of water over the total moles, which as you can kind of see there, it's not going to really add too much. Um, so it's just 24.7503 plus the 0.7957. And we're going to get our total there. So we'll take our moles of water, 24.7503. And we'll divide that by what we got here is 25.546. And we will get 0 0.9689. And uh, this is the mole fraction, as I said, of water. And that's not going to have units on there. So now we're going to move forward to the next step. P of H2O equals X of H2O and times the P degrees H2O equals, so now we're gonna plug back into what we have there. We're gonna have 0 0.9689, multiply that by what we have is our 35.7 millimeters of mercury. 
should have put moles of water here. But um, oh, actually, that's a mole fraction, so it doesn't need any um, units. So now we'll just multiply that across. We get 34.59 millimeters of mercury. So basically, what did we figure out there? Um, what we calculated is the vapor pressure of the solution at 32 degrees Celsius. And the, the temperature is really only relevant here for what the vapor pressure of water should be. And that's, you know, that's, we just took a proportion of that. Um, so now what, another thing that can be asked in these situations is how much the vapor pressure decreases. So if it asks that, it's not really like a, a trick, but, um, it can throw some people off. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take the answer that we already derived, um, 35.7, and then just subtract our 34.59, and uh, I get 1.11 mmHg. That would be our our solution there. So just watch out because you can get to what you think is the last step, solve for the, the pressure there, and then, you know, it's not, there's still one one last step and it's, it's so simple that you might almost like, you know, skip right over it. So now we'll jump right into the next one. Um, just overlay that. Um, okay, so, so here we have, what is the vapor pressure of a solution formed by dissolving 22.4 grams of acetate uh, in 100 grams of 20 degrees Celsius water. And then the vapor pressure of water is gonna be 17.5 at that temperature. Um, so just like the last one, we're gonna, what I like to do is again, like start with what we're trying to eventually get to. Um, so what we're trying to get to is X of H2O is gonna equal N of H2O over N total. Rather that's, that's kind of gonna be a what we're aiming to use for our first step here. Um, we're going to first find that moles of N, I'm sorry, the moles of H2O. So N of H2O is going to equal 100 grams of water times the molar mass, one mole per 18.02 uh, grams. And then um, we're going to get 5.5 five moles of water. So now we have that. Um, then from there, we're gonna go to our moles of acetate. And we have 22.4 grams, I believe. Yeah, 22.4 times one mole over our molar mass is 60.05 grams. So this one we're going to equal 0 0.37 moles acetate. So now we got our mole fractions. We can figure this stuff out. Um, so I'm just going to try to keep shifting this down a little bit. Um, so here we have our um, X of H2O. It's going to equal moles of water which is 5.55, and that's gonna be over our total, which is 5.55 plus the 0.37, it's gonna be 5.92 uh, moles total. Um, total, okay, cool. And now we're gonna get our mole fraction of water, which is 0. 9375 and from there uh, we're just going to straight plug it right into this so um, what do we have we have this number times our 17.5 millimeters of mercury and basically what we're doing is we're finding 73 uh, I'm sorry we're we're finding 93.75 percent of 17.5 um, and that's 16.41 millimeters of mercury. 
So not too bad. So far, these these two I think are, are pretty straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and in this case, we can um, again ask whether or not they're just double check. I think whether or not they're asking for how much it decreases, or just if they're asking for, you know, straight up what it would be, what what the vapor pressure is going to be. So with that said, we're going to go into our last problem. Um, see how I want to arrange these here. This one involves making lemonade and it gives us a table. Try to scoot that there. Here we go. Okay, so on a sunny 86 degree Fahrenheit day, uh, you prepare a pitcher of lemonade with 2.5 moles of lemonade mix powder uh, and uh, two liters of water. How much does the water's vapor pressure change after the lemonade mix is added to it? So this, this has a, a, a few different things going on. I kind of tried to make it as inconvenient to solve as possible um, in terms of the number of things that you need to do. So what are we, what are we eventually trying to do? Eventually, we need to get to X of H2O is equal to N of H2O, so our moles of H2O over the total moles. And um, really for that, we only need the moles of water because we already have the moles of lemonade mix. And we don't even need to know like the molar mass or what chemical it is. For all we care, this, this could be anything. Um, we have the moles, so we don't need, you know, we don't need the grams. We don't need to solve for that. So, um, so I guess well, the first step will be just solving for the, let me see if this, so two liters of water. And basically, so we're trying to, we're going from, this is different than the last problem, we're going from liters and we're trying to get moles out of liters. So here's what we're gonna do. We have um, one liter of water is equal to 1000 ml, we know that. This is just a straight metric conversion. Um, and that will give us 2000 ml. So now from ml, we can say 2000 mil, uh, milliliters of water, and we're gonna get that into, we're gonna use our density of water, which, you know, you uh, a lot of times you have, will have it memorized, but um, in this case, it's in the table. So if you're ever stumped and, you, and they give you a table, look for like the little fine print at the bottom of the table. That's oftentimes where you'll find it. Um, so we have 2000 ml of water and we're just going to use that density to get rid of ml. So 1 ml of H2O is equal to 1 gram of H2O in terms of its density because it's 1 gram per ml. Um, and that's assumed per 1 ml, 1 gram per 1 ml. So now we have just a 1 to 1 ratio to switch our units. Um, and then finally we have from grams up here 18.02 grams of water per one mole of water, and now we're right where we need to be. So we have, um, just do those calculations there. Okay, so what I got here was uh, 110.9878. So we'll say that is about equal to 111 moles of water. So now we've got 111 moles of water. Um, what are we gonna do now? So I think the next logical step would be just to plug it right into here and then see see if we run into any issues. So X of H2O is gonna equal our moles of water, which is, um, we said that's 111 moles we're rounding, um, divided by, we have 2.5 moles of the lemonade uh, mix powder. So we're just gonna add 2.5, so we'll have, um, I'm sorry, that's 111 plus our 2.5. So we'll have, that's gonna be 13.5. Um, and then we'll just do that division. All right, so what I got here was, I so I drew another fraction, so I'll just do it. 0 0.978. And that's going to be our mole fraction of water. So now we're going to use that and plug it back in. So next, 
find the pressure. Because if you noticed, um, we're given a Fahrenheit temperature here, and that, that's something that can throw people, you know, well, I mean, not necessarily would throw anyone off, but it's just one extra step, and it's one more opportunity for someone to make a mistake. I think a lot of times for open response questions, uh, some professors like to throw in as many of those types of things as you can, just to make sure you're being careful. Um, so we have our conversion right there, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, minus 32 times five over nine equals our Celsius, which is going to be 30 degrees Celsius. And we'll just look that up on the table. 30 and um, sorry, so 30, 31.8 MMHG. Now we're pretty much in a good place to, to finish this problem out. This is our step where we apply Rawls law. Sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So P of lemonade is going to equal the X H2O P H2O, which is going to equal 0 0.978 by this pressure that we just got, which was 31.8 mmHg. And again, we're just basically, in this case, we're finding 97.8% uh, of 31.8 in, in a way. And that's, that's kind of how I like to conceptualize it. Um, so the vapor pressure of lemonade in this case is 31.1 um, mmHg. However, this is our good point to double check. What is the question asking? So anytime you have multiple steps like this, uh, it's always good to, before you like circle or indicate your final answer, double check the, the, what it actually is asking. How much does the water's vapor pressure change after the lemonade mix is added? So now we'll just do the 31.8 minus the 31.7. So that the answer is going to be the vapor pressure change is 0 0.7 millimeters of mercury. So there you have it. Um, these are three different vapor pressure problems using Rolf's law. Uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. And um, yeah, again, uh, there's the information on Rolf's law if you need it.